So this is our first lecture in the last chapter that we cover in this class. This is a lecture on the combustion or on reacting mixtures. It's a little different than previous chapters, but let's just go through it. So you have a reaction equation. We're not going to worry about an equilibrium reaction equation where if I change the pressure and temperature of the mixture, the equilibrium mixture, it shifts the reaction point forward or backward. That's the next chapter. We're not even going to get to it, okay? All we're going to talk about is complete reaction or complete combustion. We use an arrow like this versus, in chemistry, arrows like that between what's on the right side and left side of our balanced chemical reaction equation, okay? So when you have an arrow like that, it's like, hey, we're starting with reactants. At the end, everything is at products. 100%. It's a little different. Go back and review your chemistry text and your notation in chemistry class. Okay? This is not covered this semester in this class. It's the next chapter. We're just doing the single arrow. Think of it, I started with reactants. I have no reactants left. All I have is products. Sometimes you have some unburned hydrocarbon in your products. We will take care of that. Okay, so we're very much interested in a fuel with an oxidizer. The oxidizer of interest is oxygen. And the products, we'll talk about those in a minute. Let's talk about our fuels. Well, we're interested in hydrocarbon fuels. Here's three of them. Might as well memorize them. CH4, one carbon, four hydrogen. It's called methane. Where do we see a lot of it? Where have you had it? Some of you probably live in a house that has a water heater, which is not electrically, you know, it's not electric hot water heater, but it's a natural gas fired hot water heater. How many people know if they have natural gas or lived in their parents that had a natural gas hot water heater? Couple, okay, good. So what CPS sells, they sell electricity, but they also sell to a lot of subdivisions and homes and businesses in the San Antonio area is natural gas. And natural gas is not exclusively, but it's primarily like 90 some percent methane. Methane, that's natural gas. All right, uh, propane, uh, that's another one, C3H8. Um, how many people know that they've ever seen propane, used propane, burned propane? Yeah, some of them will have a propane burner in a garage to light it. Some will have a, a cooker, a barbecue, and they run off a propane tank, maybe a little bottle. You've seen it, you have to take it in and exchange it. Typically, they exchange it for refill to get a full bottle. Uh, some may live outside city limits where CPS or not, somebody else does not have a natural gas line to you, and you have a big propane tank by your house. And that's used for the hot water heater, maybe used for a stove propane tank. Anybody seen? Yeah. So that's ideas of propane there in your experience. How about octane? Well, when you fill up your gas car with gasoline, you don't put pure octane or even close to pure octane in it. You're putting in a liquid hydrocarbon blend that has a lot of parts. It's methane, and natural gas is primarily methane. Propane you buy in the tank is primarily propane. They don't have a lot of other ingredients in there. Gasoline has a smorgasbord, a lot in it. But if you said, give me one hydrocarbon that could simulate gasoline, I'd say octane, and that would be C8H18, and it would actually have an octane rating of 100. Uh, we don't buy gas with an octane rating of 100. We buy it like 89 and 91 and 93. So you know that you're not buying pure octane when you buy a gallon of gasoline. But there you go, three hydrocarbons that hopefully you have some experience with. All right. Now, there, why do they have the name hydrocarbon? Look it. They always put the C first and the H, H second, right? Why don't they call it the carbon hydro? Don't ask me those questions. Go ask the chemistry folks. But anyway, you have to know that when you put it and burn it, combust it with oxygen, where does the carbon go in the fuel? It goes to a place where it's H-A-P-P-Y. And you have to ask the chemistry folks why it's happy in carbon dioxide. It has something to do with the outer orbitals and electrons and sharing. And oh, by the way, now we're all happy. We're a full valence shell or something like that, right? 
It's been a long time since I've been in a chemistry class. But I was worried or was interested. Why isn't it happy with CO? It's not happy there. That's carbon monoxide. It really wants to react. If you breathe it into your lung, it wants to react in your lung. It'll asphyxiate you bad, right? Or why don't they have C2O3? I don't know. The electrons are not happy. CO2, you just have to know that. How about the hydrogen? It's happy in H2O, not H2O2 or H2O3 or HO whatever, H1O4, <laughs> you know, you can, no, it's happy at H2O, meaning it's electrons and configurations are there. So when it, when you burn it, you know that those are the desired products of combustion. Okay. You get the oxygen from the air that we breathe. If you want pure oxygen, you can get a very high, we'll talk about not today, adiabatic flame temperature when you burn something. And if you're a welder, or you have a cutting torch and you're trying to burn something to melt metal, you typically have a bottle of fuel and a bottle of oxygen. And then you click it and you get a lot of oxygen when you're cutting with a cutting torch, okay? Or if you have a rocket and you really want to kick those gases out and you can fill up one side with oxygen and the other side with your fuel or however they do it in there, you, you're going to pay some money for this oxygen. But none of you have a car that goes to a gas station and then you go to an oxygen station. Do you go to a gas station for gasoline and then an oxygen station for oxygen? No, but you need to get the oxygen. Where do you get it? You just get it out of the air. That's where we get it. It's cheap. There's currently no tax on getting it out of the air. In the future, there may be. There's currently no tax of throwing CO2 out in the air. More likely, it'll be in your future, there'll be a tax for throwing CO2 out the tailpipe into the air. Right? Right. Let's move on. So, air is approximated in this chapter as 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. All right. So, that means if I have a bottle of air and it contains 0.21 kilomoles of oxygen, how many kilomoles of nitrogen are in that bottle of air? First clicker question for today. What is 21%? It's a mole fraction. So if I had one kilomole of air, that means I have 0 0.21 kilomoles of oxygen as well as 0 0.79 kilomoles of nitrogen. Isn't that what that this is saying right here? Yeah. And so then I said, oh, the bottle just happens to have 0.21 kilomoles of oxygen in it. So guess how many kilomoles of nitrogen are in the bottle? So we grade it. And it's 0.79 kilomoles of nitrogen. So... Okay, that was a hard question. We're going to have a similar question. Air is still approximated as 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. Now the bottle does not contain one kilomole of air, but one kilomole of oxygen in it. How many kilomoles of nitrogen are in the bottle? And you may need to use a calculator. All right. So what was the equation we had? We said one kilo, the way to interpret this line right here is that one kilomole of air contains 0.21 kilomoles of oxygen and also 0.79 kilomoles of nitrogen. Isn't that the way we interpret that first line? Now, good mathematics, I can take that whole equation and I can divide it by 0.21. If you have a calculator, can you take 1 and divide it by 0.21, and what do you get? 1 divided by 0.21 is? 4.76 kilomoles of air equal to 0.21 divided by 0.21, 1 kilomole of oxygen plus 0.79 divided by 0.21. See what I'm doing with this equation? So this becomes 3.76 kilomoles 
of nitrogen. Hey, it's kind of interesting that 1 plus 3.76 equals 4.76. But what, the, what they're asking for is how many kilomoles of nitrogen are in the bottle? And so the correct answer is D. Now, I'm going to leave this up here, and I'm going to make a change to and make a new question. How many kilomoles of air are in the bottle? And I'm only given 30 seconds. All right, so let's see. Oh, come on. What is these two people? They're, out, they're not even in the room. What's his name? <laughs> All right, don't want to rat out your friends. All right, now what we want to do is we want to obtain a balanced chemical reaction equation for the complete combustion of a pickle fuel. Methane is one of the fuels. Remember, you have... Everything called reactants on one side, a line, and everything called PROD products. What do you think the reactants are going to be? My fuel, hey, they just told me what the fuel is, CH4, and I need an oxidizer. I'm going to get oxygen. Now, you can put it like this. You could put 0 0.2102 plus 0.79N2. You could write that that way, no problem. But when you do the oxygen balance, it's a little awkward with that 0.21. So instead of doing it that way, you put just a 1, O2, and you put a 3.76 on the N2. What? This is crazy. No, we just covered that. You just took the previous equation divided by 0.21 to sort of scale it. So it's going to be easier when you do the oxygen balance. Then you come over to the products. Where does the carbon like to go in the products? It likes to go to CO, no, CO2. And we'll leave a space right there, just like we leave a space right there for our stoichiometric coefficients when we want to balance it. But we need to know where the carbon goes. It goes to CO2. And then where does the hydrogen go that was in the hydrocarbon fuel? It goes to H2O. And because it's going to be complete combustion of a theoretical amount of air, we have all the fuel is burned and there was no excess oxygen from the air. So there's no oxygen in the products. It's just the nitrogen in the products. And we'll leave the 3.76 coefficient in front of it. And then we'll have some other coefficients to figure it out to make it balance. All right. First lesson. You're going to be tempted to change the number in front of the fuel. Don't do it. Leave one, always one, in front of the fuel. It'll become more apparent why that's a good decision. All right? But believe me, I covered 8.30 today. I said it this. I then gave them a problem a couple minutes later, and a student had put a coefficient two or three. I think it'll be easier for me to put a two or three in front of this fuel. Don't do it. It's not easier. In the long run, it just creates problems. Okay. Now, you, can, you, you remember from chemistry how to balance these equations and get these stoichiometric coefficients. Basically, you have a, a balance. You need to do the carbon balance. You need to do a hydrogen balance. You need to do an oxygen balance. And you need to do a nitrogen balance. There's four balance equations you can write, giving you four equations with up to four unknowns. Four equations, four unknowns. I'm telling you, if you do it in this order, You'll get one equation, one unknown, be able to solve for one of them. Get to the second equation, one equation, one unknown, solve for that one directly. Get to the third equation, one equation, and that one is the only unknown, solve for that one. And so you'll just go through, through it very quickly. So just remember, do the carbon first. Okay, so if you do the carbon, the, amount of, the number of carbons in the reactants has to equal the number of carbons in the products. And so you look around and you say, where do I see any carbons? Do I see any carbons with the air? None. Do I see any carbons in the hydrocarbon fuel? Yes. How many? Count them. One. So we get one is equal to. Now we come over here and say, okay, I'm looking for an unknown coefficient A in front of that CO2. It would be A times one. Can you tell me what A is? You're done with the first one. You did the carbon balance. 
Now you do the same thing for the hydrogen balance. You count up over here on this side. You say, where do I see any hydrogens in the reactants? And how many do I see? I see four hydrogens. How many have to be, have to be, must be over on the product side? There must be four. Let's say I'm solving for the coefficient B in front of the H2O. So it'll be two times B or not? Won't it be two times B for the hydrogen? All right. What should B be? Two. This is easy. All right. Now the last one, or the next to the last, oxygen. This one's a little tricky. We often start with what's on the reactant side. For oxygen, start with what's on the product side. All right, how many oxygen do you see over here on the product side? I see 2 times 1 plus 2 times 1. Do I see 2 plus 2, which is 4? Now, I went a little slow here because it's easy to make a mistake. How many oxygen do we get from the one CO2? Two oxygens. How many oxygen do we get from the two H2Os? Two. Slowly add them. Believe me, this is where I make a lot of error myself. So I know that students would be making errors. But you need to get correctly that there's four in the products. If there's four in the products, guess how many have to be in the reactants? There must be four. I'm solving for this letter C. So if I take C times in parentheses, what's this equation? Isn't this 2 times C? What is C? 2. You did it very well. You'll, do, you'll get so good at this that you'll go so fast that you just blaze through it. I'm going a little slower on the first cut, right? Now then, nitrogen. All we have is unknown, let's say, D coefficient over here. Okay. If I look at it, I have... 2 times 3.76 times 2 for the nitrogen ends as a singular. If I come over here, I have D times 3.76 times 2. And so actually the 2's cancel, the 3.76 cancel. That's why I wrote 3.76 over there on the product side. And so what is D? Then you have correctly balanced and calculated those stoichiometric coefficients for complete combustion of methane with air. Now, I always get this every semester. Somebody took chemistry in high school and, they, and all the stoichiometric coefficients must be integers or fractions like three halves. But you should never write 1.5. Anyway, and you can do decimals as well. I know that the chemists hate that. And the chemistry at the high school level probably taught you that that was uh, incorrect. But there's nothing to say it can't be done. It, it can be done, okay? All right, so there you go. That's why a 3.76 is acceptable. All right, let's press on. Okay, obtain a balanced... Uh, chemical reaction equation for complete combustion of methane. Hey, same fuel. But this time they say with what? 20% excess air. That means I had enough to completely burn the fuel, but I had then 20% more than I really needed. So they could say this equivalent to saying it's 120% of theoretical air. Where before, we just had theoretical air or 100% theoretical air. Just perfect amount for combustion. How do I solve this problem, Professor, when I have 20% excess air? Step one, get a balanced reaction equation for the fuel with 100% theoretical air. Start there. Get that equation. We just derived it, didn't we? Sure. Let's restate it. CH4 plus, was it 2 O2 plus 3.76 N2 goes to, and we had uh, one CO2, we had uh, two H2Os, and then I'm going to tuck way over here to 3.76 N2 and two times that. And I'm leaving a lot of space here, and this wraps around like that, okay? Is this our balanced reaction equation? 
what we do is we now modify it. So you say to yourself, I have 120% excess air. Should I take and multiply by 1.2 here? Or should I take and multiply by 1.2 there? Answer A or answer B, clicker question. I'm going to start modifying this equation. The first step in the modification is to say, hey, I've got 20% excess air. Should I multiply by 1.2 in front of the O2 or multiply by 1.2 in front of the 2? If we multiplied in there, then we'd have like 1.202 plus 3.76N2, right? Did we preserve the 2179% relationship in the air? We did not. We just destroyed it. Wrong place. Don't multiply there. You want to multiply out in front. Okay? So let's grade that. Good. A lot of people had it right. Somebody's really enjoying themselves. All right, so we multiply by 1.2. That's our first modification. So we have plus 1.2 times 2 times all of that. Now, because we did that, do we have to go back and reevaluate the coefficient in front of the CO2? No, we don't. You're right, because the carbon balance determined that coefficient. And by increasing the amount of air brought in, we didn't increase the amount of carbon brought in. All right. How about the coefficient in front of the H2O? No, because that was determined by the hydrogen balance, and the hydrogen only came from the fuel. All right. But what happens is, is we have to probably modify the nitrogen, put a 1.2 there, and there is something in this underline that I need to put. What do I need to put? It's like, check, I already did the carbon balance. I already did the hydrogen balance, and I just did the nitrogen balance. There's one thing that I need to fix. What do I need to fix? I need to put the oxygen balance, don't I? The oxygen balance. All right. So if I put the oxygen balance, what are you going to conclude? Should I put 1.2 times 2 times O2 there? Answer A, or should I put 0.2 times 2 times O2 there? Answer B, or should I put uh, 0.2 O2? Answer C, what should I put up there for the oxygen balance? Um, professor, I think it would be better if you rewrote this section right here. Okay, how could I rewrite that section? I think it would be better if you rewrote it like this. I think it would be better if you wrote it like this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say that we have the O2 plus 3.76 N2, all right? And then we have the, um, the 2, and then we had the plus 0.2 times the 2, uh, O2 plus 3.76 N2. Um, does that make sense? This is added in right there. Right. So by having the, if I didn't have this, right, wouldn't I be back to the original 100% theoretical error? But instead of putting a 1.2 in front of that, I, I put additional 0.2 times O2 times blah, blah, blah. I, I expanded that term. So isn't this part the original that's needed for the combustion to make it go happy with the carbon, happy with the hydrogen? And this is the 20% extra excess? If it is, then what do I have left over for the oxygen balance? I re-asked the question. Give me your answer, A, B, or C. Is this the best answer, this one or this one? Same question. All right, I'm going to stop it. Oh, sorry. Oh, man. I just have to stop it at some time. Let's grade it. Well, there would be one more correct if I had given them two more seconds. But uh, isn't B the best answer? 
And let's see how we did before. This was 81% uh, correct as a class. Let's see, did I help by, oh, I did help a little bit, didn't I? Almost yeah, almost double. That's good. My explanation helped a little bit. I didn't say it was tremendous, but that's good. So this is now the, the balance equation. So you have a little more nitrogen going out, and you have some unused oxygen going out. You still have the same amount of carbon and water vapor per kilomole of fuel. Everything is uh, per kilomole of fuel here. So this is what it looks like. 1.22, blah, 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 look good. On the oxygen, there, there. All right. Which hard hydrocarbon fuel is unique in the following list of fuels that are below? Which one's different? Which one's unique from the other ones? Well, why is methanol different than all the other ones? Because it has a what in the fuel itself? An oxygen in the fuel. Okay, so sometimes when you're given a fuel that has an oxygen in the fuel, guess what you'll forget when you do a balance and get the stoichiometric coefficients. So let's do this. Obtain a balanced reaction equation for the fuel, methanol, there it is again, with 100% theoretical error. I'm going to pause, walk around. You do it on paper. Well, let me pick it up here. Some of you guys got it. Let's go through this. So you put your fuel, CH3OH, and then you're going to leave a space for an undetermined coefficient when you do the oxygen balance in front of the O2 plus 3.76 N2 because that's the right proportion of oxygen, nitrogen coming from air. You're going to do so much, leave a space for the coefficient in front of the CO2 when you do the carbon balance. And then you're going to leave a space for the coefficient in front of the water for the hydrogen balance. And because it's complete reaction, there's no excess air, all the fuel is used, all the oxygen is used. You just have a nitrogen left. I like to put the 3.76 there, and then that'll be the last. So it's like I need to solve for A, then I need to solve for B, then I need to solve for C, and then I need to solve for D, kind of in that order. And to solve for A, the first one you do is a carbon balance. Okay, so if I do a carbon balance, it's something equals something. If I count them up on the left side, which is my reactants, I only have one. And then if I look over here, A times one, can you tell what A is? Might as well replace it. It's one. Now, I recommended you put a one in front of the fuel. Leave it alone. Don't change it. I agree. Let's leave it right there. Now, once you put a 1 in front of the CO2, should you change it to help balance the oxygen later? No. Leave it alone. Otherwise, you mess up the carbon balance. Go to the hydrogen balance. What's that going to allow you to solve for? The B. So let's count them up on this side. This one's a little tricky. You have a 3 plus 1. You have a 3 plus 1. So there's four. Four hydrogens. Careful. Then you come over here, you have B times 2. What is B equal to? 2. Might as well replace it, and you're done. Don't change the one in front of the fuel. Don't change the, the coefficient in front of the CO2. Don't change the coefficient in front of the water. Now let's go to the oxygen balance. This one's hard because you think you work backwards. You work to find what are the oxygens in our products. So we look at it, we have 1 times 2 from the carbon dioxide plus 2 times 1 from the water. Let me go slow here. That's 2 plus 2. That's 4, right? It's 4. Then I look over here, and I'm so, attempt, I'm so tempted to do this. I don't see anything there. I don't see an oxygen there. 
And then the student would do this. They would say, okay, I'm finding C times 2. C is 2. Let's move on. Is that correct? No. What did they forget? 1 plus C times 2. Now you can solve this equation. Let me write it again. 1 plus 2C is equal to 4. Can you find C? What is it? 3 halves or 1.5. Either one works. I like to put 3 over 2 because in my mind that 2 cancels with that 2 and I know I have. Then I get, go over there and I do the counting. Okay? Okay. So three halves. The last is the finding the D unknown coefficient over here from the nitrogen balance. All right. Nitrogen balance, we find that D is three halves. Done. Where would a student make a mistake? They would forget. So say, don't forget. Don't forget the oxygen in the fuel when you do the oxygen balance. The balanced reaction equation for combustion of methane with theoretical error is written right here. Can you tell me what is the stoichiometric coefficient A need to be? And it's not multiple choice. It is numeric. All right, we stop. And we show the results. And uh, look at that. Whoa, congratulations. All right. Uh, I think these are too easy. We'll skip them then. You're too good. No, no, no. Well, no, no, I don't want to do that one. Oh, here, what is this fuel? Octane. Hey, that's a little better. Why do I have this error here? I have to walk, look at my notes. Um, let's do B. What is the stoichiometric coefficient B? And it's a numeric input. So, okay, how many, uh, how do you get the coefficient B? You get it from a hydrogen balance, don't you? And so if we look at it, we have 18 over here, and we have uh, B times 2. So B is 18 divided by 2. So what is that number? Isn't it 9? 9. All right. Now, not a clicker question. What is the coefficient A? So this is 9. What is the coefficient A in this reaction equation? 8. Isn't it 8 for carbon balance? Now, the last question, clicker question, input the value of C. Okay, so what you have to do is work backwards on the oxygen balance. And so if I know that A is 8, how many oxygens do I have with the CO2? 8 times 2, 16. All right. And if I know the B is 9, how many oxygens do I have with the H2O? And I have to be able to add these two numbers correctly. What is that number? 25. Now I come over here and I'd like to put... 25 divided by 2, that's my style. It's like, okay, 25 divided by 2 in front of that O2, it's like 25 over 2 times 2. The 2's cancel. I'm left with 25 O's. So that's the answer, 25 over 2. But if I want to put that in alphanumeric, I have to put it in as 12.5. Which one should I count right? No, I don't think so. It's only one person. Oh, that was you, the one person. All right. Okay. Fine. Okay, this fun never ends because you can continue. But what I need to do is I need to do this. I need to find air to fuel ratio. 
So air to fuel ratio, it's given the acronym AF, and it can be on a mass basis, or it can be AF with a bar over it, molar basis. What's it defined as? It's the mass of the air divided by the mass of the fuel. So you have some flow of fuel and air together. Maybe you think of mass flow rates or just how much is a mass rate equation. If it's molar, then it's the number of moles of air divided by the number of moles of the fuel. All right? The number of moles of air, I would multiply that by the molar mass of air, and wouldn't that give me the mass of air? Sure. And if I knew the number of moles of the fuel, and then I multiplied by the molar mass of the fuel, wouldn't that give me the mass of the fuel? So these aren't unrelated. They're very much related through the molar masses. Now, somebody, this other textbooks may have fuel-to-air ratio. Guess what? This book doesn't do it, but it would be fuel-to-air on a mass basis. It's just reciprocal of the air-to-fuel or the fuel-to-air on a molar basis, one over the air-to-fuel on a molar basis. But let's not worry too much about those. Let's get these two down. Here's complete combustion of propane with 100% theoretical air. That equation, let's say it's correct. Okay. What's the air to fuel ratio on a molar basis for this fuel, propane? So what is the air to fuel ratio on a molar basis? Okay, you calculate it. Uh, do you want to input it into numeric, alphanumeric? Go ahead. You calculate it and input it. Okay, let's stop this. Now, the, the, what they're saying is number of moles of O2 per number of moles of fuel. Is that what they're asking for? No, they're asking for the number of moles of O2 plus the right proportion of N2, the 3.76 N2. Isn't that it, the number of moles of air, 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 air? Okay, if somebody said I have... 0.21 oxygen plus 0.79 nitrogen, how many kilomoles of, of uh, air do I have? One. All right. Somebody says, I have one oxygen and 3.76 kilomoles of nitrogen. How many kilomoles of air do I have? 4.76. So the number of moles of air in this balanced reaction equation is my 5 in front times 4.7. Professor, this is crazy. Why is it not 3.76? I tried to explain that. And then this, you always leave 1 in front of your fuel, so 1 kilomole of fuel. And so what does this boil down to be? 23.8, is that what you got? So let's go ahead and grade it. 23.8. Why is 5? They forgot that it's, it's not the oxygen to fuel ratio. If it was the oxygen to fuel ratio, they'd be correct. But it's the air to fuel ratio, and so it's the 23.8. Thank you very much for your attention.